Live from WTVO Rockford and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. For more than 70 years, the people of Britain knew no other leader. Queen Elizabeth II has died. Coming up, we look back at the legacy she leaves behind. A bullet leaves a hole in a Rockford family's car, according to the mother, saying the gunfire makes her nervous is an understatement. And Collins Aerospace shows off a new multi-million dollar test facility. Its wind turbine tunnel could save lives. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm Eric Wilson. Queen Elizabeth, Britain's longest serving monarch, has died. Within hours of being placed under medical supervision this morning, the 96-year-old passed away. She'd been on summer break at Balmoral Castle. Her family rushed to her side after doctors announced they were concerned about her health. Rena Roy looks back at Elizabeth's decades on the throne. The longest serving monarch in British history has died. Queen Elizabeth II passing away at Balmoral Castle, her estate in Scotland, where she had been on summer break. The royal family, including her sons, Prince Andrew and Prince Edward, rushing to her side, along with her grandsons, Prince William and Prince Harry. The 96 year old's death comes after she canceled a virtual meeting Wednesday. Her doctors concerned about her health, advising her to rest. She was last seen in public Tuesday when she swore in UK's new Prime Minister, Liz Truss. Born on April 21st, 1926, Her Majesty was never expected to. To take the throne. That changed in 1936 when her father unexpectedly became King George VI after his older brother's abdication. She won public admiration by doing her part during World War II, training as a truck driver and a mechanic, soon after marrying Navy officer Philip Mountbatten. Prince Charles, born in 1948, was the first of their four children. Her father died in Kenya in 1952 and the 25 year old princess became queen. There were low moments among the highs. It has turned out to be an annus horribilis. In 1997, when Princess Diana died in a car crash in Paris, the Queen faced backlash after taking several days to publicly mourn and pay tribute to her former daughter-in-law. More recently, her son Prince Andrew embroiled in a sex scandal, rocking the monarchy to its foundations, along with the family's turbulent relationship with Prince Harry's wife, Meghan Markle. But through it all, the Queen remaining the steady center of her growing family, and always supported by Prince Philip, her husband of 73 years, until his death in April of 2021. Today marks the end of the second Elizabethan age, the end of an extraordinary reign that spanned seven decades and so much change. A family and a nation says goodbye to a much-loved matriarch and monarch. The Queen's funeral will take place 10 days from now following a national period of mourning. It will likely take place at Westminster Abbey. As for what's next in the monarchy, Prince Charles is now king. He and Camilla are expected to be crowned side by side. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. A man wanted in a 2019 Rockford murder is arrested in Freeport. 31-year-old Maria Williams was taken into custody without incident Wednesday. He was found during a search of a Stevenson Circle apartment. Officers also found a gun on him. He's been charged with possession of a firearm by a felon and no Floyd. Williams faces a murder charge in Winnebago County. He's accused of killing 32-year-old Robert Brooks three years ago. The shooting happened near Auburn Manor Apartments. Williams is being held in the Stevenson County Jail. A shooting in Rockford earlier this week had a local family ducking inside their home. No one was hurt, so they didn't think anything of it. They found one of the bullets the next day stuck inside their car. Nicole Delgado talked with the mother of three. Nicole, how's the family feeling? That's right, Eric and Mimi. The family lives on Fremont, off Fulton, and North Main. They're still in shock, never thinking that something like this would happen to them this close to home. Um, I'm nervous. Like, um, that's just an understatement. Leslie Howard never expected to find this. Tuesday morning, as she and her fiancé were getting ready to take their kids to school, sometime during the night, a bullet went through their trunk of their car, lodged in the back seat, the seat where one of her kids usually sits. What if we were just pulling up and then someone just pulled up and just started shooting? My kids could have lost their lives. The couple immediately called Rockford police, and investigators removed the bullet. The family has lived in the North End Square for five years and never had any problems. Now, Leslie tells me she's afraid to leave her house. Her biggest fear is what if it happens again? It's not okay, you know, 
my kids love playing outside and now they are asking me why they can't play outside and, I, and they're only five and seven. I shouldn't have to explain to them that you can't go outside because people are not thinking about other people's lives. Leslie and her family are taking more precautions and installing cameras at their house, and this has made them more aware of their surroundings, even in their own neighborhood. Uh, nowadays, you don't know what's going to happen, and it's sad that you have to be so, you know, keeping your head in the 360, just trying to make sure you're, you're safely going to point A to point B. It, it, it shouldn't be like that. So, that, and that's what I feel like I have to do now. Leslie is thankful no one was hurt, but tells me she is still looking to move out of Rockford. Eric, Mimi. Thanks, Nikel. Collins Aerospace adds to its footprint in the state line. The company unveiled a new $18 million Ram Air Turbine Wind Tunnel Test Facility. The Ram Air Turbine is designed to produce emergency power in an aircraft emergency. It deploys into the airstream and spins like a small generator. This new wind tunnel has the ability to test turbines of all sizes for business, regional, single aisle, wide body, and military platforms. Colleagues execu Collins executives say the turbine has saved lives. Because a lot of times that information gets proprietary, but we are able to triangulate. It's been over 2,400 lives saved between commercial and military incidents. Collins sees the $18 million investment as a continued commitment to the state line. With the election only a few months away, Stateline advocates are hoping to see more people at the polls. Coming up, their recent rally focuses on registration. And Northern Illinois University releases its enrollment numbers for the semester coming up at 6. This comes as the freshman class continues to grow year over year. The summer warmth continues for at least another couple of days before we see an October-like chill set in for the latter half of the weekend. Also comes with some decent rain chances, too. We'll time those out coming up in the forecast a little later. You're watching Eyewitness News. You're a home team with Eric Wilson, Mimi Murphy, Scott Lepper, and Chief Meteorologist Candace King. UPS is already hiring for the busy holiday season. In the state line, they plan to hire over 1,500 seasonal employees. Full and part-time jobs are available. Seasonal drivers, package handlers, and driver helpers are most in need. Driver positions start at $21 an hour. According to UPS, 80% of positions do not require an in-person interview. The number one benefit is really the opportunity uh, that UPS provides. There are over 400 unique jobs that UPSers um, are able to see before the general public across the country. 36 of those opportunities are here in Illinois, and 34 of them have the word supervisor in them. We have posted a link to those jobs on our website, mystateline.com. Local voting advocates say they want more residents to show up at the polls. They're taking steps to make that happen. Go Vote 815 is a nonpartisan effort to get out the vote for the November 8th election and beyond. Involved organizations will work to register more people to vote. The group was formed after only 17% of eligible voters took part in the June primary. Advocates hope the coalition grows. We can pull all the people together in this 815 region and constantly be reminding people uh, about voting, educating them, and offering them opportunities to be engaged civically. Go Vote 815 has a Facebook page. There you can find simple steps groups and individuals can take to help people understand how important it is to vote. We've posted a link to that on mystateline.com. Another day of sunny skies and temperatures in the 80s. Coming up, the streak of 80 degree days will soon come to an end. Candace looks at our rain chances, too. Now, your first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. I had a little fog out there early this morning. Derek captured this picture of the sunrise just east of Lanark. You can see some of that fog just above the uh, crop line here on the horizon as the sun comes up. You've got a little red and orange uh, as well as some haze has kind of moved in and some smoke actually from the wildfires out to the west. While the concentration has definitely been higher for locations out to the west, what we'll notice 
notice here not only through the night tonight, but also going into the morning tomorrow, especially to the north and west of Rockford, a little bit more of kind of that haze or smoky look to the sky. That, as a ridge of high pressure continues to build in, that ridge breaks down a little, so we'll get rid of some of that and add back in more cloud cover, unfortunately, here for the weekend. You can see a little of that on the horizon as we look with our SkyTrack camera now to the north and northwest. Some of those cumulus clouds we had out there earlier today fading away, which means another clear sky as we go through the night. We're at 80 in Rockford, 79 in Freeport, Monroe, 81 in Janesville, 78 comfortable degrees in Rochelle, and 81 currently now in Dixon. Enjoy tonight, tomorrow, most of Saturday, because some big uh, changes are on the way, more of an October-like feel once we get into Sunday and Monday, as temperatures most likely going to stay in the 60s. All of that in response, we've got our next storm system working in from the west. In fact, uh, the storm response for really carving out and pulling down that cooler air now working in across the North Pacific just south of the Alaskan Bay and that will work through as we head towards Saturday night and into Sunday. But until then, nice and quiet here. You've got some cloud cover increasing well off to the west. That is also tied in with a cold front that will work through Saturday night and then into Sunday. So back down to 58 degrees. We've had some dense fog these last couple of nights. Had a little fog out there this morning. Morning. May still see some of that again, but I think here with each night it gets a little less and less as our wind picks up from the south. The wind not quite as calm and that high pressure system moving a little further to the east. We're up to 84 for tomorrow afternoon. Wind will be breezy coming in from the south and southeast at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. But we keep our skies dry here as we go throughout our Friday. No issues tomorrow evening. Low 80s for tomorrow afternoon. Little cloud cover works in Friday night into Saturday. Saturday. That's just ahead of that cold front, but we've got things going on on Saturday. I think this is definitely going to be the pick day uh, out of the weekend. Most of that rain is going to hold off until late in the day, late afternoon, and then into the evening. You see some showers starting to work in here west of a line from Janesville down to Freeport, down through Dixon. Some of that rainfall could be a little on the heavier side as some heavier showers could come down Saturday into Sunday where those totals could add up to a little over an inch. Area one right around half an inch to three quarters of an inch expected with some on and off showers that will continue through Sunday afternoon. But the big story along with the rainfall is going to be the chill. We're in the 80s for Saturday. But behind that front, temperatures in the 60s on Sunday. And it is going to look gloomy, too, especially with that cloud cover. We may actually dry out for a time Sunday night going into Monday, just as that low kind of sits and spins. Temperatures most likely staying in the 60s even once we get into Monday afternoon. It's a short-lived chill, but just a quick reminder. It may sting a little bit for the weekend, too. You see the numbers, guys, warm back into the 70s here. Overnight lows will still stay in the 50s next week, so still fairly comfortable. It's nice to see the temps trending up, although not quite to where we're at. Right. In the last few days. Candace, thanks. Wisconsin next with sports. The NFL season's ready to kick off, so he'll tell us what he thinks of the Bears this season. And is it possible the Packers could be a better team despite losing Devontae Adams? Now sports with sports director Scott Lever. September 8th today isn't a holiday, but it is this year because tonight the NFL season kicks off with one heck of a matchup. The Bills take on the defending Super Bowl champion Rams. So let me get back into prediction mode. What do I think of the Bears this year? Based on the preseason, I'm confident they'll be much better coached with Matt Eberflus and his staff than they were under Matt Nagy and his guys. This doesn't look like a team that'll shoot itself in the foot with a bunch of mistakes. The coaches will make better use of Justin Fields' ability to roll out of the pocket, and they'll play more aggressive on defense. Despite that, the Bears will be out-talented most weekends, especially at the receiver position and on the offensive line. And their defensive line is questionable at the tackle spots. Fields needs a better line and more weapons around him. So most of this season is going to be a struggle. I have the Bears losing Sunday to the 49ers 24-13. Rainy weather could make this game tricky for both teams. And the Packers don't have Devontae Adams, but there's a lot to like about this team. This could be the Packers' best defense since Reggie White was wreaking havoc. They have a lot of depth in the front seven and the secondary. I expect this to be one of the top five defenses in the NFL. That defense will carry the Packers early while the young receivers learn on the job and get, the, get on the same page with Aaron Rodgers. I do like the potential of Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs. And I expect around week six, 
Those two will really turn it on. I think this receiving core is potentially deeper than the Packers have had in recent years. It just doesn't have that proven all-pro number one guy in Adams. And the offensive line should be very deep once Elton Jenkins and David Bakhtiari are back to full speed. I'm high on the Packers. Those young receivers will struggle with the noise in Minnesota Sunday, but the Packers' defense will help them squeak by the Vikings 24-21. to have the Packers winning the NFC North at 12-5, and five, the Vikings next at 10-7. and seven. The Lions have a ways to go, but they're coming. They're going to go 6-11. and 11. The Bears will go 5-12. and 12. My best to the NFC are the Packers in a tiebreaker over the Rams, the 49ers third, the Buccaneers fourth. And my best to the AFC are the Bills one, Bengals with those phenomenal offensive weapons second, followed by the Chargers, Chiefs, and Ravens. And my Super Bowl pick, yeah, I got the Packers getting it done over the Bills 27-24, February 12th in Glendale, Arizona. That's my take. We'll be right back. Candice will have a final look at weather in just a moment. First, here's what you can watch later on News Nation. Tonight on Dan Abrams Live on News Nation. A Democratic lawmaker in Nevada facing murder charges for stabbing a journalist who was covering him. Cable News Network's not covering the story much. And MSNBC isn't even mentioning that he's a Democrat. Would this all be different if the suspect were a Republican? That's tonight on Dan Abrams Live. That's all on News Nation. Tune in to any of these channels or NewsNation.com. Things are pretty quiet for us here as we go through the night tonight. The first WARN interactive radar brought to us by Rockford Auto Glass and more. You may notice a little more haze kind of on the horizon here this evening. Same thing for tomorrow, too, as some smoke from the wildfires out west kind of caught in the jet stream here. Temperatures in the upper 70s and low 80s will drop down into the 50s once again for tonight. We're down to 58 degrees, back up to 84 for tomorrow afternoon. You've got games going on tomorrow night. No problems with that. Same thing for Saturday. I think most of our Saturday is going to be dry, but the rain increases and could be a couple of heavier showers north and west to here Saturday night into Sunday. On and off rain showers, but a lot of chill sticks with us through Sunday and Monday. Big drop in those temperatures, too. Gradual warming back into the 70s, upper 70s as we get towards the middle to end of next week. Those overnight low temperatures, too, will be fairly comfortable. Could actually see a couple of nights where those lows, guys, dip down into the low 50s, so maybe a little cooler to kick off early next week. Week. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to feel more like September. It's <laughs> a good reminder, Monday. but it's nice to see that we get back up into the mid to upper 70s. Something to look forward to. Right. Thanks, Candace. And thanks for watching. Have a good evening. Stay safe.